Uh, today is Saturday, April 22nd, uh, 2017. Uh, two weeks ago, I gave a Tay show on uh, the Foxconn case number two in the Wumon Kwan Gateless Barrier by Chung and the Fox. I'd like to uh, take a look at that koan again and basically redo that Tay show. Uh, <clears throat> There may have been reasons like uh, I had a very bad toothache, the tooth got pulled on Monday, um, but I felt that uh, that Taisho was uh, overly self-indulgent. Uh, it tried to put too much into it. It wandered. So I'd like to look at this again uh, uh, from a more mm, streamlined perspective, let's say. So again, the case, Bai Chang and the Fox, uh, in the translation uh, done by Robert Aitken Roshi in The Gateless Barrier, The Wuman Kwan in Japanese Mumon Kwan uh, by Robert Aitken Roshi, uh, this uh, <clears throat> goes like this. What you, and again, he uses, and we do here in this endo too, again, the Chinese names, as these were Chinese teachers, not Japanese, even though uh, Zen comes through Japan in the end to us. Uh, we're using the Chinese names uh, for Chinese teachers. Whenever Bai Chang gave a Taisho, an old man was always there listening with the monks. When they left the hall, he would also leave. Then one day the old man stayed behind, and the master asked him who he was. The old man replied, I am not a human being. In the far distant past, in the time of Kashapa Buddha, I was the head priest on this mountain. One day a monk asked me, does an enlightened person fall under the law of cause and effect or not? I answered, such a person does not fall under the law of cause and effect. Because of this answer, I was reborn 500 times as a fox. Now, I beg you, Master, please say a turning word on my behalf and release me from the body of a fox. He then asked Bai Chang, Does an enlightened person fall under the law of cause and effect or not? <clears throat> Bai Chang said such a person does not evade the law of cause and effect. Upon hearing this, the old man immediately was deeply enlightened. Bowing, he said, I have now been released from the body of the fox. The body is on the other side of this mountain. I wish to make a request of you. Please, abbot, <clears throat> perform my funeral as for a priest. The master had the Eno, uh, the person who's uh, leading the uh, chanting and uh, such, uh, uh, strike the Han, which is uh, the block. We use a little mokagyo for similar things here, and announce to the assembly that after the midday meal, there would be a funeral service for a priest. The monks talked about this among themselves, wondering how this could be, since everyone was fine and there had been no one in the, in the Nirvana Hall. The Nirvana Hall uh, is a hall for those who may be sick, uh, potentially fatally so, heading towards their Nirvana, leaving behind this body. So, uh, gosh, no one's uh, been even sick. There's no one, definitely, and not just the, uh, you know, whatever the hall for those who are not feeling well might be, but in the Nirvana Hall. <clears throat> After the noon meal, Bai Chang led the monks to a rock on the far side of the mountain, and there, with his staff, he poked out the body of a dead fox. He then performed the cremation ceremony. That evening, Master Bai Chang took the high seat before his assembly. That was the tradition in China. It was a chair, kind of a bamboo chair, up on a platform and uh, or a little stand, and that's where the uh, uh, Roshi would give uh, his teishas. That evening, Master Bai Chang took the high seat before his assembly and told the monks the whole story. Wang Po stepped forward and asked. The old man failed to give the correct turning words. 
and was made to live as a fox for 500 lives, you say. If, however, his answer had not been incorrect each time, what would he have become? Bai Chang said, just step up here closer and I'll tell you. Wang Po went up to Bai Chang and slapped him in the face. Bai Chang clapped his hands and laughed, saying, I thought the barbarian had a red beard, but here's a red-bearded barbarian. So, <clears throat> Wu Men's commentary. Not falling under the law of cause and effect. Why should this prompt 500 lives as a fox? Not evading the law of cause and effect. Why should this prompt a return to human life? If you have the single eye of realization, you will appreciate how the former head of the monastery enjoyed 500 lives of grace as a fox. Woman's verse, not falling, not evading, two faces of the same die, not evading, not falling, a thousand mistakes, 10,000 mistakes. So first, who is Bai Chong? or Yakujo in uh, Japanese. <clears throat> Aiken Roshi writes, <clears throat> Bai Chang had been a student of the great Matsu, who was more than any other teacher responsible for the efflorescence of Zen in the Tong period, that's 618 to 922, almost 300 years, just about. The occasion of Matsu in that period the occasion of Matsu helping Bai Chang to deepest understanding is well known. Once when Great Master Ma and Bai Chang were walking together, when Bai Chang was a student, a wild duck flew up. The Great Master said, what is that? Bai Chang said, a wild duck. The Great Master said, where did it go? Bai Chang said, it flew away. The great master laid hold of Bai Chang's nose and gave it a twist. Bai Chang cried out in pain. The great master said, when did it ever fly away? Bai Chang was thereafter intimate with himself and the world, and he went on to a career of teaching that affected the entire course of Zen history. He is the ancestor of the Linchi school and revered as the founder of the monastic schedule of work, services, and zazen that Zen centers maintained with modifications to the present time. <clears throat> uh, so, <clears throat> well, let's take one other look at one other thing from Aiken Roshi on this koan, by the way. Hold on. Yeah. Uh, Aiken Roshi, uh, sees this as a way of saying that there's a, a younger Bai Chang, or an older Bai Chang, let's say, from long, long ago in another world age, who has asked this question. Uh, after kalpas of continued zazen, he has attained a more subtle understanding, uh, and he returns uh, to question his younger self and get himself clear. So uh, it's kind of a metaphor. So uh, uh, Bai Chang, the elder's response, can be construed in two ways, the literal and the essential. The literal view is the belief that there really can be Buddhas who are harmonized perfectly with essential nature. Then there is the essential view, the integral uh, purity of all beings from the very beginning. As the Buddha himself said, all beings are the Tathagata. But he added, their delusions and preoccupations keep them from testifying to the fact. All this bears directly on the problem faced by the two Bai Changs and the way they ultimately handled it. So now let's take a look. Although this koan comes early on our curriculum, in our curriculum being the second case in the Wu Men Kuan or Gateless Barrier, in it, the genius of Zen is on full display. Classical Buddhist tradition tells us that it takes eons to attain the goal 
of complete and perfect enlightenment and actualize our intrinsic potential, as the Jatakas show. In those past life tales, we see the Bodhisattva working lifetime after lifetime to realize selfless wisdom and compassion and actualize it so fully that at last there is nothing but wisdom and compassion. Classical Buddhism says there are 10 lengthy stages to this many lifetime journey of progressive development from beginner bodhisattva to full Buddha. When Roshi Kaplow would pass someone on an initial koan, he would point down to the edge of the mat and say, as it, it's as if you've gotten onto the very edge of this sitting mat. If you keep going, you will start to move across the mat. Lifetimes of effort are needed to get all the way across, but you've started. Congratulations. This is humbling and realistic. A tiny initial glimpse, enough to allow us to work on subsequent koans, which will help to deepen and broaden that tiny initial glimpse, is not yet the enlightenment we read about in books, but it is a start. And it is essentially the same as the Buddha's own realization beneath the Bodhi tree. In essence, while it is the same, there remain worlds of difference in depth, fullness, functioning between an initial experience and full spiritual maturity. A baby is fully a person, but it can't yet walk or run or write a symphony or raise a family or help a friend. A pine cone is a pine tree, a 200-year-old pine tree that touches the sky, that birds nest on, that offers shelter, that gives pine nuts for food, and gives squirrels a home, is also a pine tree. A finger painting by a kindergartner is a painting. So is a masterwork by Rembrandt, Monet, Van Gogh, or Picasso. All are paintings. But worlds of conscious difference and skill separate the beginner's work from that of an accomplished master. A drop of water is fully water, but it cannot yet assuage thirst, prevent drought, or support a boat. Zen accepts the reality of effort, sacrifice, commitment, and time. The dedicated work needed to mature an initial insight or initial aspiration into a realization capable of benefiting all beings. And at the same time, it flips it over to show what? What is revealed? Here lies Zen's point. What is here right now? now. Hakuin says from the very beginning, all beings are Buddha. How does this clarify this story of the fox? <clears throat> Aiken Roshi, in his commentary on this, suggests that Bai Chang might have come upon the stiffened body of a dead fox and thought, Here's a chance to offer some Dharma food to the cubs and concocts the backstory of the former abbot's wrong answer that leads in the present to a dead fox. While it contains the tale of an initial insight maturing over a long time, it is also something more. Keep in mind that from the perspective of classical Buddhism, the answer does not fall under the law of cause and effect, is correct. Bodhisattvas are said to go, as, as I've mentioned, through ten lengthy stages, kalpas and kalpas, until they are at last fully realized Buddha, Buddhas thoroughly harmonized with the universe. What's wrong, then, with the answer? Why isn't it subtle enough to satisfy the current abbot, Bai Chang? What's right about does not evade? the law of cause and effect. Why, with this answer, <clears throat> is the former abbot released from his fox body of immature understanding? Once free, he requests his mature self, the younger, Bai Chang, 
to cremate his fox form in a funeral service for a priest. His ceremony is held bewildering all the monks. How can you cremate in a funeral service for a priest a fox? All are confused except Wang Po. When Wang Po, is Obaku in Japanese, hears the story, he says to his teacher, Bai Chang, so you say wrong answers led to this previous abbot's rebirth as a fox for 500 lives. What if he'd given the right answer? What would he then have become each time? In short, where does the progressive path lead? Where do jatakas lead? Where do the ten stages of the path of the bodhisattva to Buddhahood lead? Where does effort advances on the path, koan after koan, breath after breath, precept after precept, sashin after sashin, get us? What does getting someplace get us? Hasn't your little tail pointed to something important, flubbed its own message? Bai Chang says, good point. Come up here and I'll tell you how I see it. We might think, aha, in front of everyone, my teacher gets my point. Cool. And we'd step forward encouraged, maybe even a bit proud. Do you remember the story of the gingerbread man. An old man bakes a gingerbread man, an old woman rather, bakes a gingerbread man who jumps out of the oven and runs off. Stop, shouts the old woman, but run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch me, I'm the gingerbread man, sings the new baked being, and off he goes. He runs past an old man who also tries to stop him. And he sings out, I ran past an old woman and I'll run past you. And he heads off, run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm the gingerbread man, etc., etc. And then he runs past a pig and then a cow and a horse. <coughs> the same thing happens each time. Then he comes to a fox. A fox. I outran an old woman and an old man, a pig, a cow, a horse. Uh, and I'll outrun you, too. Run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm the gingerbread man. What, says the fox? I said, says the gingerbread man, slowing down, I outran an old woman, an old man, a pig, a horse, a cow. My, my hearing's not so good these days, says the fox. Could, could you try again? The gingerbread man steps closer and repeats his tale more slowly and louder, carefully enunciating each word. Uh, just a little closer, please, says the fox. M my hearing, you know. Stepping closer, the gingerbread man repeats his tale louder still. I said I outran an old woman, an old man, uh, you know, and on and on, etc. And I'll... Snap! Go! That's the end of the gingerbread man. It seems that our story is headed in the same territory, too. Come on up here, uh, says old Bai Chong. Uh, and I'll, I'll make it clear to you. Uh, only Wang Po opens his jaws first and snap! Teacher and student, fox and man, or all swallowed, swallowed whole, gone, gone, entirely gone, Svaha. What was Bai Chang's, Bai Chang's point? What does Wang Po show? Why does Bai Chang slap, clap his hands for joy and exclaim, I thought the barbarian had a red beard. But here's a red-bearded barbarian. And on that slap, it was probably a mime. The slap one's teacher would have really been 
totally off base given monastic etiquette. It would have broken uh, all the forms quite terribly. Uh, traditionally, this has been seen as a mime, not an actual wallop. And by the way, Wong Po was said to be a giant, seven feet tall, and built in proportion, uh, physically vigorous and imposing. And Bai Chang was a gnarled little old priest. An actual slap might have sent him flying across the uh, Dharma Hall. So is it better to be human uh, than to be a fox? Is it better to be a Buddha than to be a human? Case 69, Shoyoroku, Book of Serenity. Nanchuan, it's nonsen in uh, Japanese. Nanchuan addressed his assembly and said, all the Buddhas of past, present, and future do not know it really is. Instead, the badger and the fox know it really is. What could animals know that all the Buddhas of past, present, and future do not know? What's the implicit mistake this points to? Asked as even a dog, which at that time was considered a lowly, filthy animal, have Buddha nature? Zhao Chu answered Mu. Literally, Mu means no or not. Though there's a point there to take that answer literally as the meaning would hardly be liberating. It would also ignore the fact that sutras say that all beings have or are Buddha nature. The glossary for the three pillars of Zen says Buddha nature is a concrete expression for the substratum of perfection, of completeness, intrinsic to both sentient and insentient life. Let me repeat that. Buddha nature is, quote, a concrete expression for the substratum of perfection, of completeness intrinsic to both sentient and insentient life. The Illustrated Encyclopedia of Zen Buddhism says that the word kensho, the term usually given to an initial realization, means seeing one's nature. That is, Buddha nature are unstained, selfless, unself-centered nature, which is also known as self-nature, but with a capital S. The Kanzeon says this nature is itself eternal, selfless, joyous, pure. Dogen reminds us that Zazen is not only the path of realization, but at the same time is itself the expression of our innate, closer than close, self-nature, is itself self-nature, self-naturing. Because it is so close, we cannot see it any more than an eyeball can see itself. But because we are it, we each have the potential to awake to it. The Buddha, upon his complete, full, perfect enlightenment, said, wonder of wonders, all beings are already Buddha. Only their delusions and preoccupations prevent them from attesting to it. But why, if we all have it or are it, must we tirelessly practice to actually know and live it. Zen master Dogen was driven deep into his practice by this paradox. If all beings are Buddha from the beginning, why did all the sages of old have to sweat blood to realize it? This question gave him no peace and led him into ever-deepening practice until with full realization the dropping away of all concepts of body and mind, he knew. He knew it personally, way, the way we know water is hot or ice is cold. Woman's commentary and verse asks us to be clear, not falling under the law of cause and effect. 
This is the commentary. Why should this prompt 500 lives as a fox? Not evading the law of cause and effect. Law of cause and effect, of course, is karma. Not evading. Why should this prompt a return to human life? If you have the single eye of realization, you will appreciate how the former head of the monastery enjoyed 500 lives of grace as a fox. Some translations say enjoyed uh, his 500 lives as a fox as lives of grace. Not that he enjoyed them with grace, but as grace. How does not falling lead to 500 rebirths as a fox? How does not evading bring about a return to human life? How does a fox scrounging for its meals live 500 lives as lives of grace? Isn't it just a smelly fox out in the wild, out in the wind and rain? What is a life of grace? And how does this issue of grace relate to our life, yours and mine, right now? Our lives right now are not without their difficulties. How is this a life of grace? Dane and Henry Roshi uh, in the 60s had an old VW bus. One night on a lonely road, it broke down. Cursing and upset, he headed for a farmhouse he'd passed a few miles back. As he walked, he noticed the stars overhead, smelled the rich odors of turned earth and growing grasses. A night bird called. It turned out to be one of the most beautiful walks and nights of his life. Aitken Roshi adds, When I was living in La Crescenta, California, attending Senzaki Nyogen Sensei Zen meetings in East Los Angeles on weekends, I used to walk up a dirt road into the National Forest. One day I came upon a fox, or a fox came upon me where the road bent around a little ridge. She had come trotting down from above, and I appeared from below. We both stopped and looked at each other. At that moment, the wind came up and blew a large piece of newspaper around and around on the road in a miniature cyclone. The fox jumped on this piece of paper and looked at me with a merry look in her eye. Then she stepped off the newspaper and it began to blow around again. She jumped on the paper again and looked, and looked at me, just as though she were inviting me to laugh at her great game. Suddenly conditions changed, and she ran back up the road. This encounter was truly an experience of grace. When you take up Zen study, your task is to personalize such grace in your own body. As Yamada Roshi used to say, the function of Zen is the perfection of character. We are not merely solving intellectual riddles. Examine Wu Men's comment carefully. He is not suggesting that old Bai Chang merely made a virtue of necessity. He did not simply make the best of things as he was sniffing around. The point of practice, let me go on, Koans, Teisho, Doksan, breath practices, is to help us realize the depths of our own lives right now and accept the import of our life just as it is. How is your ordinary life a life of grace? This does not mean simply acknowledging and being grateful for the good things in your life, or even for the painful things. We can, of course, do that, and while it may be psychologically helpful and encouraging, it is not the point. The practice of realization, this daily Zen practice, Zazen, Doksan, Seshin, Zazenkai, can help us awake and live our whole life complex 
and challenging and sometimes as difficult as it is as a life of grace. How? Umen's verse, not falling, not evading, two faces of the same die, not evading, not falling, a thousand mistakes, 10,000 mistakes, not falling, not evading, two faces of the same die, what is that? not evading, not falling, a thousand mistakes, 10,000 mistakes. What is the central mistake at the core of these thousand mistakes, 10,000 mistakes? This is not a riddle to figure out. How do we live it? One day, maybe today, maybe tomorrow, Maybe yesterday, time stops. No coming or going. And someone or something ancient and timeless remains and says, I am not a human being. Lao Tzu in the Tao Te Ching says the sage is not human-hearted, but the sage is definitely not hard-hearted or inhumane either. What is the nature of a fox? What is it to be a fox? What is the nature of a human being? What is it to be a human being? When asked by the Emperor Wu who he really was, Master Bodhidharma said, I don't know. Zen Master Hakuin's Zazen Wasan song in praise of Zazen concludes with a stunning stanza. What is there outside us? What is there we lack? Nirvana is openly shown to our eyes. This earth where we stand is the pure lotus land. And this very body, the body of Buddha, this means exactly what it says. What do we lack right now? This very body means not the one you'll get next time around, not the one you'll be when you are a radiant Buddha millions of lifetimes from now, but this one, with all its aches and pains, its awkwardness, its lack of symmetry, its aging, faltering ways, its attachments and desires. Hakuin says, this very body, the body of Buddha. He did not mean this symbolically. He's not talking about the long-gone historical figure Shakyamuni Buddha either. Hakuin also doesn't mean that you're so okay you'd need do nothing. Rather, he's telling us that this is where practice realization begins. Do you see how wonderful how revolutionary this really is. Do you see how it enfolds the fox koan? If you do, then you see <coughs> how and why Zen is Zen, and why it's also your own most intimate path.